Hey, this is Keith from Save the Rest. So today I thought I'd show you one of the bikes that kind of started my collecting of vintage bikes. Um, I got this bike in around 1996, 1997 from a friend of mine. Paid $200 for it and uh, it was my introduction into small displacement British bikes. This is a uh, 49 to 52, 53 James. Um, trying to remember exactly what year and how I came up with it again. It's, there's The serial numbers don't really tell you much as far as uh, exact years. And what it came down to when I was doing the research on this years ago was um, I think in 48, the toolbox was a round toolbox and then it went to the triangle toolbox off to the side. I'll show you in a bit here. So determining the exact year on these are, is, is quite difficult. It could come down to um, just small specifics on types of, uh, if I remember correctly, on the types of the wheels and the, the size because they changed them. But regardless, um, so I got this bike and uh, got it running long time ago 20 plus years ago and uh i did ride around a little bit and then what happened was as soon as someone as soon as everyone found out i i, I kind of like these little bikes i got a massive amount of leads because these bikes were sold locally from northwest cycle and at one point there was a lot of them all scattered around and they're relatively cheap so i ended up picking up almost every one I could find because every one of these bikes that you ever come across, it's rare to find them in one piece that nothing's missing. And I probably bought 10 of these bikes over the years and I think I have one chain guard. I don't have any front fender emblems. I've never even seen one in person. That's how hard they are to uh, find. So. What I did is over the years I bought, like I say, everyone I could find. I got in my attic, I have a bunch of frames and uh, gas tanks and forks and, you know, wheels and etc. And then you start kind of getting less, you know, good fenders, less tail lights, less uh, luggage racks, less, less amounts because they got stripped off. You know, as soon as someone took one of these off, it never went back on and uh, it just got scrapped or trashed. So over the years, I took some of my best parts and, and kind of put this one together as a future restoration. Um, this is just spray canned, you know. I just wanted to find use the best parts I had to kind of throw it on here and see what I have. So it was years before I actually found a crash guard. These are really hard to find. Um, this one would have been the deluxe model because it has a battery box. And um, I'll go over some of the unique things about this bike. So this is a Villiers motor. Uh, Villiers actually, they just produced motors and they put them in over 200 different bikes. They put them in James's, they put them in Francis Barnett's, they put them in um, Cotton's, Dots, you name it. There was a 200 different types of machines that Villiers supplied motors for. So this would have been the 1F model. This is a two-speed transmission. And what's neat about it is it's, just, it's off the handlebar. It's not a foot shift, it's a hand shift. So you just move this almost like a, a choke and there's a high, neutral, and then low. So it's kind of, you know, that's a unique feature. It's got the um, Smith's D-shaped uh, speedometer. I have the setup for uh, the front speedometer drive. I just don't have it on this one. Um, Two-stroke model, uh, kickstart only. And uh, this one has lights. And uh, yeah, it does about 32 miles uh, 32 miles an hour, so close to 50K. And um, it's just a neat little bike. Like when it's, it's kind of small, it's, you know. 
you know, it's a tiny little thing. And these would have been used These would have been used by, um, you know, teenagers of the era of the 50s, 40s, and uh, they were they were fairly cheap at the time. So on the bike we have a it's a drum brake on the back. It's a foot operated off your left foot, and it's a 19 inch wheel. Here's your Villiers motor. This is your clutch cover, your little carburetor, and a single cylinder, 98 cc. There's a, a new muffler for it. There's a new tail light, the original tail light house like holder, and a brake light. So it actually had a brake switch or brake switch, sorry. Then this piece actually went on top of the fender to cover the wires. So that the wires could go to feed the tail light. On the front of the on, the on the headlight, here's your switches for your lights. There's your speedometer. Lots of grease points, which is kind of nice. There's grease points everywhere, so it'll last a long time. Uh, front drum brake. And uh, got a cool look to it. I always like these little bikes. So I switched it on over to the right side. And uh, just look at the gas tank. I love that raised area on the tank. So this is your flywheel. And behind it, so it's an external flywheel. And behind it is your points and your lighting coils. There's your toolbox. So that's a, this is a bit of a later frame. The seat wouldn't have been leather, it would have been a canvas, but that one's been on there forever. Single shock on the front end. And here's your, so I'm not sure if you can read that. So here is high, neutral, low, and you just, with your thumb, you would just, there's your low, neutral, high. There would have been a switch for your, for your headlight? No, it would have been here. So, always nice to have original driver's handbook and spare parts guide. Tells you all about it. So it's nice to have that. Here's another original manual, maintenance manual and instruction book. Tells you all about it. So you can see the emblems on here. There's, it's kind of neat. And here's an original brochure from uh, Angersoll, Ontario. And this one, that's that would have been the James back then. You can see the, the chain guard, front fender emblem. Those are hard to find. So when I say I bought a lot of them, here's some engine cases. There's another set of cases, another set of cases. There's some carburetors, some barrels, and it goes on. Here's some rear sprockets, new old stock, and more pistons and all kinds of stuff. There's flywheels down there. All these boxes are full of parts. There's another partial motor. This is the 4F, which replaced that one with the external flywheel. Um, this one has, a, I think it's called a Dynastart um, ignition. So these are, I think they came out in 50 or 52. So they were to replace that one. And uh, yeah, so I've got a bunch of Villiers motors.
Need to buy them while you can find them. Even have a cool reproduction sign a buddy of mine made for me. The originals are just impossible to find. And here's another little James that I had started putting together a few years ago. Just, you know, used up fenders that were had been cut up and, and that were wrecked. So I just put on some shorter fenders, had an extra motor, just kind of started throwing it together and kind of making a little military model just because I'll get back to this one day. So here's an original paint tank I thought I'd show you just so you can see the emblem. The same emblem was on the chain guard and at the back on the where the license plate mounted so this is an original tank and you can see how sun how how much the sun changed it and you can see on the inside that's the original color there's a cover that goes over top of here so that's that you know that didn't get damaged by the sun but so you can see the do two differences and if we flip it around you can see a little dent here but Still a beautiful tank that's 75 years old. And um, so Villiers powered the uh, James. It powered the new Hudson and another new Hudson. So I thought you'd like that. Here's an original paint 98cc James that we have in our collection. This, so this is the earlier one with the round toolbox. So I believe this is a 47 48 we have a video on it if you want to check it out rare to find them in this condition this one came out of a barn southern manitoba and i took it all apart repolished everything reassembled it into what you see here so i hope you enjoyed that short video on uh Kind of a rare little bike, not as rare in this part of the world because we had one dealership that would sell these. Um, I know in other parts of uh, Canada, you know, there's a lot of BSAs, but there's not a lot of Jameses. So, you know, it all depends on who you were, where you lived and who was the dealer and what models and bikes they carried. So around here, these are a bit more common than let's say in other parts of Canada. So. Hope you enjoyed that. If you like that, like and subscribe. You know, check out some of our other videos. We do have uh, more British bikes in the collection. And uh, have a great day.